because uh, I would like to see that, and I will talk about it. I'll warn everybody about it, because I can tell you right now, it's got Antichrist written all over it. Jan says, Hi, Pastor Mike. I was looking up the back of the dollar bills and found one image that was very close up, and in the webbing surrounding the numerals are woven strands that look like DNA. I was going to add the image, but see, there is no place here to do that, so here's the link. Let me pull that up here. See if I can show you that. Where is it? Where is it? Um, in the webbing. Oh, okay. Let me show it to you. Right here. Okay. Take a dollar bill and look at it right there. You'll see what looks like. It's, it's definitely interwoven. Never knew that. I appreciate you. I, you showed me something brand new today. Jan, appreciate it. Justin says, Hebrews 13.20 has 27 words, and chapter plus verse equals 33. Do you know of any other matches to the subject of the verse with, with these numbers? No, that's not really something that I've ever studied, uh, but you're welcome to do it, all right? Mac has an inter... You, you caught my attention, Mac. Mac is a former Iranian. Well, he's Persian by birth, um, but I've had enough conversations with him to know uh, he loves his people. Uh, he's now living uh, at a secret location in Europe. That's all I can say. Um, he loves his people, but he said, Mike, they're full of witchcraft. I, I would... I would just love for revival to break out in Iran. You know what? I would just love for that to happen. But he says, Hi, Pastor Mike. 72 and 10 in Islam. He said, Hussein was the son of Ali, the first imam of Shia Islam, and Fatima Zahra, which is the daughter of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Hussein is an important figure in Islam as he is a member of the household of Muhammad as well as being the third Shia imam. Or imam. Hussein is highly regarded by Shia Muslims, which is in Iran. He was killed and beheaded in the Battle of Karbala in 680 by Shamir Ibn Thil Joshan, along, pardon my Arabic, along with most of his family and companions. The Battle of Karbala. The battle took place in the year 680 between Caliph Yazid's army uh, from Syria, reinforced by troops from Kufa and the caravan of families and friends of Hussein Ibn Ali, uh, the grandson of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. It is sometimes claimed that 72 men, including Hassan's or Hussein's baby son, of Hussein's army, were killed by the forces of the Yazid. And the annual memorial for him, his family, and his children, and his companions is called Absura, tenth day of Muharram, and is the day of mourning for Shia Muslims. Very interesting. Uh, I would say that there's probably a connection there. So, Mac, if you do a little bit more study, bring it to me. I'd love to see it, all right? Tom from Bristol. Uh, Pastor Mike, my wife and I were watching the New World Order Olympics. Remember, they start out at Mount Olympus, which is where the gods are. And on the back of Sean White's snowboard was the skull and crossbone. You know, I saw that. Uh, then he made it a point to position his board during an interview so the TV audience could see the all-seeing eye on the front of his board. Also, And, by the way, these guys did lousy. From what I saw the other night, they did lousy. All the American guys in the half pipe fell. Every one of them. Is that a prophecy? Dun, dun, dun. Well, I don't know because the American women did the half pipe the other night and they took two, two medals. Anyway, from this, area, from this area, and you would think the greatest men in America just died and the news did a report on the rise in, uh, of heroin use in this country. Anyway, oh, okay, I see, I, I see what he's saying now. So the TV audience could see the all-seeing eye on the front of his board. Also, Seymour Hoffman is from this area. Yeah, he is, uh, Rochester area, Bristol. And you would think the greatest man in America just died. Yeah, they did. They talked a lot about him. Let's see here. Who else can I, who else can I pick on today? Uh, let's see here. Da -da -da, that's pretty long. Sharon says, hi, Pastor Mike, I'm glad you're healing well, and I thank God for your ministry. It seems that I'm being forced to enroll in Obamacare. If I don't, my tax penalty will be almost the same amount of my refund. The problem is that the affordable health care is not very affordable to me. Any thoughts on the plan? 
let me say this. I have health insurance. Had health insurance before Obama decided that I need it. Um, it's part of what the church pays me. They have uh, this church has taken very good care of me, and I, I just I appreciate. It. I love this church. Um, they started providing paying my insurance for me and Sweetie Pie several years ago, um, and Matthew. And so anyway, it is now the law of the land. It's been contested. I think it's a joke. I think it's going to bankrupt the country. And I, I have a sneaking suspicion that it is a way to control the masses. That I have no doubt in my mind about that. Um, is, does that mean that if you enroll in Obamacare, that you, that is tantamount to taking the mark of the beast? Because I've heard, you know, I've seen some people on the internet and that's what they're saying. And especially the people who said that you just watch and see come March of 2013, Everybody's going to have to have the chip implanted in their skin because that was in the Obamacare law. By March 2013, you watch and see. And it didn't happen. So it wasn't in the law. Um, but once the camel's nose is under the tent, then the camel's going to come in. And if you smoke camels, that's good. But if not, then that's bad. Um, is it a sin to sign up for Obamacare? No. No. Is it a sin to get health insurance? No. Is the government requiring you that you get health insurance? Yes. Is it a sin to not get health insurance? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've been teaching on biblical authority, including government having authority over people. I've been teaching on that. And I am I am just a proponent of obey the laws until the laws start requiring you to disobey God. Then you stand with your arms crossed because when your arms are crossed like this you're making a fist. And you say, I'm not doing it. Okay? That's when you don't do it. Uh, Sharon, your conscience, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you in your conscience. If you will ask God what to do about it, He'll tell you. Now, you may be able to afford the penalty. And you say, I don't want the insurance, I don't need it, and I'd rather pay the fine than get it. And remember, here's what I've said. There are times when we can resist the earthly authority, and times we should resist the earthly authority. Just be ready to take the consequences. And in this case, you have to shell out a few hundred bucks. In Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's case, it was the fiery furnace. In Daniel's case, it was the lion's den. So you have to decide, am I ready to not obey the law and take the consequences? Okay? So, Sharon, you ask the Holy Ghost that question. All right? You ask the Holy Ghost that question and ask him to show it to you in the scriptures. Because then you're going to go, this is my answer right here. All right? Man! I've had a ball being being with you today. Been good. All right. Been good to be with you. And we'll talk about some other interesting things going on in the world. Come next Tuesday, the Watchman video broadcast coming out Sunday. Uh, chemical sorcery, Sunday morning church, Sunday night church, teaching from the Word of God, the King James Bible. Uh, I'm glad to be with you today. God bless you. We will see you.